Salutations. Today's briefing, B-21 Raider. Who is going to use it? The B-21 Raider, the world's most advanced stealth bomber, has just been revealed, but not yet shown flying, and is designed to replace the B-2 and B-1. The role of the stealth bomber is to penetrate and survive in advanced air defence environments. Does Australia need a strategic bomber and a stealth one at that? What is the capability requirement? Australia has a long history of operating bombers and long-range strike aircraft, and for understandable reasons, just look at its geographic location. However, none of the previous aircraft have had strategic reach. This briefing will look at the pros and cons of Australia introducing the B-21 Raider into service, and whether the UK or Japan might also procure it. This is the latest in a series of briefings on Australia's military capability. Uh, see SSNs for Australia brief linked below. At some stage during the briefing, please hit the like button. It really helps with the YouTube algorithm. The B-2, the world's first stealth bomber and putting the F-117 strike fighter aside, is an extremely capable platform, but is expensive to procure and remains expensive and difficult to maintain. Added to this is the fact that only 20 are operational. The Raider is a completely new system that uses a smaller and stealthier airframe, the same type of engines mounted on the F-35 as well as other development, such as all new stealth coating. The idea is that the B-21 will not be as dependent on specialised supported air bases as the B-2 is. The B-21 aims to be significantly cheaper to procure and maintain, and according to US sources, is designed to be an 80% solution to replacing the B-2 in terms of range payload performance. At this stage, the US Air Force is planning on procuring at least 100. Arguably, the most significant feature of the B-21 is its networking capability. It will be able to perform intelligence, surveillance and reconnaissance missions, act as a drone mothership, or potentially as an interceptor carrying large numbers of long-range air-to-air missiles. Before examining the pros and cons of Australia adopting the B-21, why might Australia want it? Australia previously operated Lincoln and Canberra bombers and could have replaced them with other strategic bombers, such as the British V-bombers or the B-52. Instead, Australia procured the F-111 strike aircraft, indeed the only country outside the US to operate it. Although not a strategic bomber, the F-111 had good range payload performance and could fly very fast at very low altitudes. When the F-111s were retired, Australia lost this strike range. Instead of replacing this capability with an aircraft, Long-range missiles based on ships became the preferred solution, at least in part because there was no suitable replacement available until the B-21. As I've said, US sources describe the B-21 as an 80% solution to replacing the B-2. Its smaller physical size has led to a smaller payload of 30,000 versus 40,000 pounds or 13,600 to 18,000 kilograms, and apparently slightly short of range of around 5,000 kilometre radius. Critically, it will be significantly cheaper. This image shows a 5,000 kilometre radius around the US-UK facility at Diego Garcia, the Australian facility at Cocos, and the US facility at Guam, to which of course you'd add the range of the, the carriage standoff weapons. Australia's Cocos doesn't add much in terms of additional territory covered, apart from an additional airbase to operate from, thus providing redundancy for US Air Force B-21s, and of perhaps more value than Darwin and Tyndall Air Bases provide. In terms of weapons, the B-21 is planned to be able to carry all weapons currently carried by the B-2, as well as all future weapons. So why does Australia need the B-21? If Australia is involved in a conflict with China, does Australia have an operational or a capability requirement to strike, say, Fujian province or Hainan Island? And if so, does this require an aircraft? There are two critical points concerning a potential Australian acquisition of the B-21. First, if the B-21 is procured primarily to counter China, and Australia sees the B-21 as a critical component of its contribution in a conflict against China, they will likely need to be operational service before around 2030. Otherwise, the window to prevent a conflict over Taiwan will likely have closed. It would also mean Australia wants the ability to strike PRC territory with its own assets. Is there a genuine view that Australia needs this type of sovereign capability 
noting that it would be a small one of around, say, 12 aircraft in case the US is unable or unwilling to assist. Would Australia's possession of B-21 deter a Chinese attack or significantly degrade PLA capability should conflict arise? Of course, a B-21 in Australian service would have broader utility than just as a strategic bomber, probably being used as a drone mothership, for example, working with the MQ-28 Ghost Bat. And secondly, what of the cost? Might the purchase of the B-21 Raiders impact other ADF programs, for example, the SSNs? Might it be a case of either or with regard to the SSNs and the B-21? Might other capabilities need to be reduced or withdrawn to pay for it? Then there is the possible political or regional political cost. For the UK, the conflict in Ukraine has focused attention on Russia, while statements on countering China and Indo-Pacific NATO and the establishment of AUKUS also point to how the UK could argue a case for the B-21. Might the UK return to the strategic bomber? So it is possible all UQSA members might operate the B-21 in the future. As for Japan, a potential future member of AUKUS or whatever it might be called, its reinterpretation of its constitution has allowed it to reintroduce aircraft carriers by way of conversion of the Izuma class into acknowledged aircraft carriers. Introducing a strategic bomber would be highly unlikely, likely a step too far for Japan. But there is a trajectory in Japanese foreign and defence policy that could see Japan introduce new capabilities. For Australia, the pros are, well, apart from stealth, the B-21 provides long range. From a logistics point of view, it will operate the same engines as the S-35 already in service with the Royal Australian Air Force. Its ability to conduct intelligence surveillance and reconnaissance missions, and that is able to operate as a drone mothership. In terms of cons, possible pressure from the US to employ them, as it would bring a, another flag to the table in a potential conflict, even when perhaps Australia would rather not. Regional reactions, and not just from China, but Indonesia and Malaysia. And capability trade-off, as I've mentioned before. What does the ADF give up in order to obtain this capability? Might Australia again be the only country to operate the latest generation of US combat aircraft outside of the US, as was the case for the F-111s? In summary, the acquisition of the B-21 would provide a tremendous increase in the ADF's long-range strike capability, as well as allowing it to conduct missions it currently is not capable of. The critical question, of course, is what will the ADF have to give up in order to acquire it? That may well be a reduction in the SSN acquisition or significant impacts across the land force. As an aside, I would not be surprised to see China's H-20 stealth bomber unveiled soon. That concludes today's briefing. Thank you for watching. Happy to take suggestions for future briefings from subscribers, so please subscribe, like, and share. Until next time, bye, latest arrow.